Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at taking an ESP8266 and a DHT11 and report temperature and humidity data to Home Assistant. Okay, the ESP8266 is a microcontroller that has built-in Wi-Fi, which is what makes it great for home automation projects. I have them in two varieties here, so it's the same chip, um, but this one is a Node MCU. This gives us more input-output and also gives us more ground pins that you will find quite crucial for some, uh, some projects that you're doing. And I also have it in the D1 Mini uh, form factor here as well. The good thing about these is these are these are super cheap. I'll leave a link for these in the description. These are slightly more expensive, but actually still quite cheap. Now you may well have come across the ESP8266 chip without really noticing. So for example, these Sonos smart light switches, they run the ESP8266, um, as well as all of Sonos other devices. Uh, the ESP8266 is also used in things like Wi-Fi controlled RGB light strips and so on. Okay, a quick look over on Amazon and we can see that we can pick up a two-pack of D1 minis for $8.99. You could probably get these cheaper on eBay or maybe Banggood or somewhere like that. Um, obviously with, e uh, with Amazon you have the convenience of uh, faster delivery. The other component we're using in this project are these DHT11. Uh, again, here we can see we've got a five pack for £7.59. Again, you might be able to find these cheaper elsewhere if you, if you look around for them. Uh, the other resource that we're going to use during this video is the ESP Home uh, website, which I will leave linked in the description as well as all the parts that we've used. So we're going to head on over to Home Assistant. Now I've done some of this already uh, because the add-on takes a long time to install and a long time to start. Uh, but I'll talk you through the steps that you need to get to the stage of having it installed and up and running. So you're going to head on over to Hasio and go to the add-on store. Now in the add-on store we need to add this new repository. It's really simple to do. All you do is take this link here that is again available on the website that I'll link below and you paste it into this section here and click add and then you will get this box here. Once you've added this repository, if you scroll down to the bottom of the screen, you see that you have three new options here. These will all be greyed out. This is green because, as I've already said, I've already got this installed and up and running. What you do next is click on ESP Home and there'll be a button here that says Install. Go ahead and click Install. Now again, the reason I've already done this is because it takes a long time to install. So don't try and restart it or refresh it or anything like that. Just let it do its thing. And once it's installed, go ahead and click Start. After you've clicked start, just keep an eye on the log uh, at the bottom of the page and it'll show you in there once everything is up and running. Once you have everything up and running, we can go ahead and open the web UI. Once in here, to set up your first node, it'll, it's going to talk you through exactly what you need to do. So we're going to set up a node that will report temperature and humidity of my office. So we can go ahead and click on the plus and it wants us to give our node a name. So we're going to go office underscore sensor. You can't put any spaces in here. You can only use lowercase letters, numbers and underscores. Once you've named your node, go ahead and click continue. And then I'll ask you what device you're using. So in this case, I only need one data pin, one ground pin, and one 3.3 .3 volts I'm going to use in this case. 
uh, pin. So we can go ahead and use the D1 Mini for this. So we're going to select D1 Mini and Wemos D1 Mini and click continue. It's then going to ask you for your Wi-Fi information. Now I've already done this in preparation for the video so it has remembered my Wi-Fi information. Yours won't on the first time around so go ahead and enter in your uh, information and click continue. Then we can go ahead and click submit. Okay. Now what we can see is now we get this uh, this sensor here. So we'll get one of these boxes for each of our of our um, of the nodes that we set up. So we can go ahead and click edit, and you can see here that we get this four zero four not found. Now I've found here is that this will continue to do this until we restart Home Assistant. So I'm going to go ahead and give Home Assistant a restart now and we'll come back in a second. Okay, now we've restarted Home Assistant, I've come back into the ESP Home uh, homepage and now if we click on edit you can see that we get um, the edit file and we're no longer getting that error. Next thing I'm going to do is head back over to the esphome.io uh, website and in here they have a page about setting up uh, the DHT sensors and we're just going to copy the code out of here. We could type this out um, but it's just quicker and easier to come into here and we're just going to paste the code into here. Now we are going to make some changes so we are going to say in here I'm going to call this office temperature and office humidity. The other thing we're going to do is if we look here we can define what model we have. Now we are going to do this because I found if you don't tell it what model you have sometimes it will not auto detect the model of DHT sensor you're using and you'll have problems when flashing the uh, microcontroller. So to do that we're just going to come into here Let's see. so model is DHT11 I think it's uppercase let's just double check yeah it's DHT11 Okay, from here we're just going to go ahead and click save and then we can close out of that. Next thing we're going to do is back over on the uh, on the website we need to install the ESP Home Flash Utility that can be found on the Getting Started page uh, somewhere. It is around there somewhere, yeah, it's, it's on this page somewhere. Just find the flash utility and go ahead and download that to your desktop. Then we're going to come back over to Home Assistant and we're going to compile our build. Now we'll let this run for a little while just so you get a bit of a real-time sense of how long this takes. Um, however, if I feel like it is taking far too long, I might cut this down in the edit. Okay, so I did go ahead and uh, cut that down in the end there. It was taking quite a while. Uh, actually, you can see it took 114.9 seconds uh, to complete. Once you get the uh, successfully compiled program, we can go ahead and download the binary. And that's going to download this binary file here. So we can go ahead and jump over to our desktop and open up the... ESP Home Flash Utility. Now I am just going to close it again because I found what you have to do here is you do have to run it as administrator. Okay, so once we're in and running as administrator, what I'm going to do uh, just off camera here is I'm going to plug in 
the D1 Mini that I'd like to use for this project into a USB port on my computer. And we're going to go ahead and refresh the serial list and you can see we have Comport 7 showing up now. I'm then going to browse for that um, file that we just downloaded. Which for some reason I can't find. So let's just jump back over here and show in folder. And then let's just cut it from here and stick it on the desktop so it's nice and easy to find. And there we go. So we can open that up and then we can click flash ESP. Now, you see I got this um, no permission error here. Just leave it for a moment and it might well start doing its thing. If not, just click this again and you can see that it has started this time. Um, for some reason that error just seems to flash up every now and again. So this does take a little while to comply. So what I'm going to do is just pause the video here and we'll come back once it's done. Okay, so it has now successfully flashed. We did get a successfully flashed message show up. Let me just see if I can scroll up and find that for you. Uh, just here, done, flashing is complete. And now what it's doing is it's trying to read data from the uh, from the temperature and humidity sensor. Have you seen we're getting invalid readings? Um, because we, we haven't plugged all of that in yet, we haven't wired that up. So let's take a look at doing that now and then we'll come back and look at what data we're getting here. Okay guys, uh, what we've got here for the wiring is really quite simple. So we've got the D1 Mini here with our USB cable going off to our computer. And then we've got the temperature and humidity sensor here. We've got ground connected to ground, power connected to power and the signal connected to D2. So now we've got all that in, let's see if we're getting any data on the flash utility. Okay, so now we have the sensor plugged in to the D1 Mini. We can see here that we are getting data back from our sensor. So we can see we have a temperature of 28 degrees and a humidity of 53%. Now let's have a look at how we can get this to show up in Home Assistant. Okay, now we're back over on Home Assistant. We can see that our sensor is now showing us online, which is a good sign. And if we head over to Overview, the sensor should auto-detect, so we don't have to go in and add uh, the entities or add cards. That should be an automatic process. And you should get a notification here to show you that a new entity has been detected. However, you can see we're not getting that at the moment. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go into General, we're going to just give our configuration a quick check, make sure that that's all good. And we're going to go over and we're going to just give Home Assistant another reboot. And we'll come back once that's completed. Okay, now that Home Assistant has restarted, we're going to go ahead and click on Overview. Now what should happen and what probably will happen for you is you will have a notification here which will ask you to configure your new device. That's not happening for me and I think it's probably because I've already done this a few times and I've been playing around with it quite a lot in order to make this video. So if you get that notification, just go ahead and configure your new entity through that and you'll get a new card here on your home screen. However, I will show you what how we can uh, add the card if your notification doesn't show up. So we're going to go ahead and click on the three dots up here and configure user interface. And we're going to use the plus button down in the corner here and we're going to add entities and we're going to give our, uh, our card a title so I'm just going to call it office you can also change the theme but we're going to just leave that as stock then under entities we're going to find our sensors so I'm going to scroll down until I find office temperature and then also office humidity here 
I'm going to turn off the toggle because we're not really, this isn't something we really can turn on or off. It's something we want to see all the time. And we can go ahead and click save and just exit that. And now we can see here that we have our office humidity and temperature that's being pulled off our sensor. Okay, now what we could do is just call this a day here. Uh, this is all up and running. We could just leave this on the desk like so. However, I kind of want my breadboard back and it doesn't look very professional. So what we're going to do instead is take a bit of this uh, perf board and mount the components onto here. Okay, now we have this node here sending its information back to Home Assistant. Uh, we could just leave it in its current form and uh, stick it on the desk. However, I think we could do a bit better. Um, I think we're going to design and 3D print an enclosure for this. Okay, and here we have it, the finished uh, product in its 3D printed enclosure. Now I definitely need to work on my 3D printing design a little, these holes don't quite line up and I had to get the Dremel out to uh, make the hole big enough for the USB cable. However, it, uh, it is functional and it works um, and you can see here that it is reporting its temperature and humidity um, data back to Home Assistant. So this is probably just going to live under or near my desk somewhere and we'll plug it in uh, via a, a wall charger rather than into the computer um, and that's that up and running and you could duplicate this as many times as you want uh, throughout your home you just give the sensor a different name we're going to be looking at ESP home uh, for a few other uh, types of sensors and devices in upcoming videos as well so stay tuned for that Please do go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Subscriptions uh, really do mean a lot and mean the channel can grow and I can keep videos coming. Uh, also, like and comment if you liked the video and thanks for watching.